So what do we do when we do ethics? Whether it's bioethics, business ethics, sports ethics, parental ethics, wherever human endeavor takes place, you could have ethical reflection. What do you do when you do it? And I have spent my life arguing that what we do is try to explain to one another the source, the reasons for our feelings of constraint. I can't do that. Would you go over and what makes me feel that ought, that I must do that? And more interestingly, what difference does it make? We all know that all reasons are not equal. If you ever argued with a teenager, you know that. <clears throat> But when I explain my reasons for my feelings of constraint, oh, I can do that. That's against the rules. What does that say about me? And what does it say about you? Or, oh, I, 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 I don't do that. That's against divine intervention. What does that say about me? And what does that say about you? Or, I'm a 40-year-old son living home with mother, and I think, oh, I can't do that. What if mother found out? <clears throat> the reasons we give for our constraint help to identify what we call being human. I spent my life teaching and we never let a student take an ethics class who hadn't spent a semester trying to figure out what it means to be human. So they finally are ready for ethics and they move into the discourse out of a solid background of recognition that to be human isn't to be an ice cube in an ice cube tray. To be human is to be by definition in relationship so that even my feelings of constraint mean that in my self deciding what is right, I must include what you think is right and you must include what I think is right. What difference does moral and ethical discourse mean? It means the difference between understanding the true nature of being human and alternative facts. <laughs> if, it, it, if it takes a lifetime of discourse comparing reasons because I want you to understand mine for my feelings of constraint and I want you to feel maybe you ought to feel constraint too at the same time. If it takes a lifetime to do that, isn't it a small price to pay? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Center for Practical Bioethics Board Chair, Dr. John Yase. You know, I knew when I had to follow Sister Rosemary that uh, it creates a great sense of insecurity. Well, nevertheless, uh, good evening. On behalf of the board and the staff, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the Center's annual dinner. There are a lot of people and faces here I recognize have been here many times, and I know there are a number of people that this is your first, uh, first dinner. Uh, 
this summer, the center will begin its 34th year of advancing the health and dignity of all persons. The center responds in an extraordinary way to the myriad of health issues uh, that uh, impact each of us every day as we conduct ordinary lives in ordinary ways. At your place is a program booklet. It contains information about tonight's speaker and honoree. It also contains highlights of the center's plans for the future, as well as listing and thanking the many supporters uh, who make our work possible. We hope you will take it with you to read more about the work of the center. Now, the uh, center is governed by a, a, a hardworking board of directors, uh, and I would like my colleagues on the board to stand for just a minute to be recognized as we thank them for their guidance and support of the center. So, board members, please stand. I would also like to thank the center staff, who's a small but a very important and a mighty group for all the hard work that they provide throughout the year. They make this dinner and more importantly, all the worthy work of the center possible. I'd like if there are any members of the staff in here, I think some of them may still be kind of cooking out in the kitchen, but if any of the center staff members are here, please stand. I know there's a few behind me. So. <laughs> Now, finally, uh, for those of you that have been here in the past, you might note this ballroom is a little more high-tech than usual for us. We were talking before, I think we used to just use a megaphone and kind of gave our talk uh, without even a microphone, let alone all those lights and everything. Fortunately, we're the beneficiaries of a large corporate conference that's going on right now. And they, along with the mule walk, have graciously allowed us to use this setup. So we really appreciate that. It was great timing to have our dinner at the time of this uh, corporate event. While we appreciate uh, the opportunity to share, uh, please remember that this is a one-time opportunity for us. And next year, it may look a little bit more like the traditional <laughs> dinner. We're setting the bar a little higher here. Uh, finally, it's uh, my pleasure to, to, to welcome our honorary co-chairs for, for this evening, uh, David and Julie Warm and my uh, state senator, Barbara Bollier, and her husband and good friend, Rene Bollier. So thank you for being here. Good evening and welcome. Uh, Rene and Barbara and Julie and I are just absolutely thrilled that you have come out this evening to celebrate the work of the center. Uh, we're especially thrilled that Senator uh, Barbara Bollier uh, made it away from Topeka for the evening and so we thank her for her extra measure of public service this evening. I will tell you that all four of us um, uh, just hold this center uh, in deep regard, its mission, its impact. The center uh, makes us better people, better professionals, a better community, a better society, really. And it would not be possible to do the work of the center were it not for an extraordinary network of civic supporters that is represented here in this room tonight. So thank you so much for your work of the very important mission of the center. I also have the privilege on behalf of our group of thanking our sponsors for this evening. And so I want to begin with the group that is the tribute sponsors, St. Luke's Health System, HCA Midwest Division, North Kansas City Hospital, and the University of Kansas Hospital. And to our visionary sponsors, Kansas City University of Medicine and Biosciences, the Stowers Family Foundation, the University of Kansas Medical Center, and Burt Berkeley in honor of Joanne Berkeley. And thanks to another, Ren yes, thank you, absolutely. 
And, and there is another René Bollier, perhaps yet another famous René Bollier, the cousin of Dr. René Bollier. And we would like to thank him for uh, uh, and express our appreciation to Andres, Andres Confistory Suisse, and I practice that, um, who provided the box of chocolates. Thank you very much to Andres. So listen to this, because of the generosity and the guest tonight, I am delighted on behalf of the four of us to announce for the center that so far you have raised $320,000 to advance the work of the center. That's extraordinary and that's worth an applause. Many of you obviously have made that possible and have given generously uh, with to be here tonight, um, and we thank you very much. Others of you may be here tonight as guests or as an invited uh, a member of, a, of, a, of another organization sponsoring a table, and we'd like to offer you an opportunity to support the work of the center. There's an envelope on your table, and we encourage you to take a look at it and feel free to make a donation, and the staff will um, collect it from you on the way out. Um, you're also welcome to take the centerpiece, uh, which uh, you can also put a minimum donation suggested of $20 into the envelope, and, and, and one of your members of your table can take that this evening. And I've also been asked, and this is an important message, to invite all of you, whether you're thinking about estate planning or not, to consider joining the Center's Legacy Society. Again, you can make a note on the envelopes provided at your table if you'd like to join uh, a group of devoted center supporters, and one of the staff will follow up with you. Um, we especially want to thank uh, those of you who have already joined the Legacy Society, whose commitments are listed on the screen in front of you. Thank you for your long-term support of this work. 